Okay, so welcome everybody to our August 3rd uh, MIFOS user meeting. Today we're going to focus on doing our Google Summer of Code midterm showcases. So I'll just quickly give a brief rundown on our agenda for today. So we just started with our round of introductions through the community, and then we'll just have a couple quick announcements, and then we'll move into the demonstrations from our interns. So in terms of recent releases that we've made, like hopefully you've seen through the mailing list and you've had a chance to test or download uh, the most recent distribution of Mifos X that we shipped. So we shipped Mifos 17.07. And this includes the reskin code base, which was actually a Google Summer of Code project from last year. And then it took significant effort from members of the community like Mohit, Malik, and then a number of our GSOC interns like Ronik, uh, Mohit, Courage, and Gopala to get the new code base merged into the current code base and fix a number of regressions that had popped up. But finally now we have the, the reskin that the community can benefit from. And then some of the UI work that Gopala has done this summer is in as part of this release. And then there are a number of other small enhancements that have come in. So we welcome you to download the new release or you can request a cloud instance that has this release on it. And we're looking forward to shipping a new release of Apache Finarac soon. It'll just have some minor enhancements and other features that have come in through the community. And then we'll have another Mifos X distribution powered by that shortly thereafter. And then as these Google Summer of Code projects wrap up over the next month, month and a half, we'll also begin shipping the work that's been a part of this summer that you'll get to see a glimpse of today. And you'll get to see more of at a subsequent uh, GSOC showcase. Also just wanted to you know call out and mention a recent announcement we made via the mailing list and via Facebook and there's a going to be a blog post up on the blog soon too. So we know that there's often a pretty high need from users and other members of the community to get developers to do you know paid work developing features, implementing Mifos, you know perhaps it's a staff position for an IT manager or you need a custom report developed. And so often, you know, we just directly connect you with a partner, but we wanted to help make this connection happen more organically. So that's why we've created a jobs board on our mobilized platform. And so their users or partners can post needs and services that they have. And so these could be paid services or it could be a potential volunteer project. But then we'd like the post to be visible to the entire community and then others can come see and respond and let them know that they have a service that they could provide in response to that need. So the link to register is there in the slide deck, which I'll share after the meeting. And I'll also share the, the link to register via email too. But we highly encourage everybody in the community to join. And whenever you have a project, whether it's an RFP or an implementation that you need done or a custom feature developed, that you share it to the the jobs board and that'll allow partners and others in the community to respond and try and do the work. So we're going to get into our showcase in just a moment but before we do that I wanted to you know just briefly give a rundown on the various projects that our Google Summer of Code students for 2017 have been working on. So this is just a photo from our welcome post earlier in the year. So we have the honor of working with 12 Google Summer of Code interns on the Mifos initiative side. And then we also have three interns that are working on the project officially through Apache Finaract. So this is just a little summary of the different innovations and features that our interns are working on. And we're not going to have a chance to have each intern do a showcase today. So today's focus is primarily going to be around our mobile and self-service apps. But I did just want to give a brief update on the other projects so the community can be aware of what's coming up. And we should be scheduling another meetup in the next couple of weeks to allow them to do a midway demo of the work that they've done. But taking a look at the interns that we have focused on our web application, 
So we have Gopala from India. He's been working on redesigning a number of the key screens and imp implementing w wizard workflows throughout the, the web app. So that'll help to greatly improve the user experience. And he's also been trying to conduct some interviews with community members to gather and gauge their feedback on how the UI could be improved. So if you'd like to you know, give your feedback on improving the user experience around the web app, uh, I'll send around the link again. But there's a survey that you could fill out, and then we'll set up a, a, a call to discuss that. And then Ronak, who will be demoing his work today, has been working on the web app version uh, of our self-service app, so using the self-service APIs. And then Mohit, who interned with us last summer, he's been working on providing browser-based offline access through Google Chrome. And then Courage from Cameroon, she has been working on extending the notifications framework that Audion built during Google Summer of Code last year. And then on the mobile side, today we're going to see some demos of the work that's been done thus far. So Dilpreet will start us off, and he's going to do a demonstration of the Android self-service app. So we had the first version of it worked on by Rajan last year. And then Dilpreet has been extending that and adding in improved design and a number of new features throughout. And then Naman is going to be demonstrating uh, an app that's been built on top of the mobile wallet framework he's been building. So the first use case he's catered to is for a like merchant wallet for the India space. And then Tarun and Mayank are going to be demonstrating some of the features they've built on our Android Field Officer app. So trying to bring it from version 3.0 to version 4.0. And then at, in general, at the platform level, we've got several interns working on uh, numerous features. So Kumaranath from Sri Lanka, actually, not India, has, is on the slide here. He's been working on extending and integrating the, the data import tool. And then Alex, he's been working on two-factor authentication. And Tesora, he's been working on doing a static analysis of the platform and fixing and identifying and fixing you know, any vulnerabilities that have come up. And then Vladimir has been working on a mobile money uh, gateway and providing a generic gateway in which to integrate with the different APIs of various mobile money services. And the first one he's using as a proof of concept are the Bionic APIs from Uganda and East Africa. And then through Apache Finneract, uh, Rajan, who interned with us with Mifos last year, has been working on a mobile field officer app on top of generation two of Apache Finneract or generation three of Mifos. And so that's a, a brand new app on the brand new architecture. And he also uh, interned with us through Mifos last year. He's been continuing his work on the credit bureau integration. And then he's also been doing some other uh, loan enhancements on the Finneract platform. And then lastly, Sanyam, who's on the call today, He's been working on doing live API documentation through Swagger. So that's a, just a really brief rundown on all the great work that our many students have been doing. And they've been at their projects for just about two months now. And they've got a few weeks left before they formally wrap up Google Summer of Code. So I want to thank everybody for their contributions thus far, as all of our interns have been really hard at work along with the, the mentors who have been supporting them uh, each week and helping them get through their projects and any obstacles they're, they're facing. So with those brief introductions, I'm going to make Ronak the presenter as he's going to be doing our first demonstration. And Ronak, as I mentioned just a moment ago, he is going to be doing a demo of the web self-service app. And Ronak has also been, you know, helping out a number of other of our GSOC interns by providing mock-ups and designs. So he's not just a developer, but a designer as well. So a lot of the great mobile designs that our other interns have been working on, uh, Ronak played a key role in coming up with those designs and mock-ups. So let me just make Ronak the presenter, and I'll unmute you, Ronak. So. Yeah, whenever you're ready, Ronak, you can share your, your screen, so. Hello. Yep, yeah, I can see your screen now, Ronak. Thanks. 
Yeah. Man, for all during all, all of the demos, if there are certain features or suggestions you have, like we'll try and hold discussion till the end of the, the demo. But type it in the chat and so we're welcome, you know, we very much want to get new features or new use cases that you'd like to support so we could potentially, you know, have these worked on during this Google Summer of Code or we can put them into our roadmap and prioritize them to have other interns or volunteers or contributors work on those features in the future. And so go right ahead when you're ready, Rana. We have your screen is visible and we could hear you. Okay, hello everyone. So I've been working this summer on the web cell service app. So this is a web application for the clients to have their accounts overviewed and they can do transactions through their accounts. So you have an option to register yourself if you already are registered on the platform with EFOS. So you can go ahead and register yourself with providing the details on all the stuff. You also have an option to reset your password if you've forgotten it. So I'll go ahead and just log in. Uh, if anybody needs the link to follow along, I'll just paste it in the chat as well. So this is whatever savings he has made so he gets a good overview of what he's doing on the platform next he can check out all his accounts that are registered with the platform his loans uh, the amount that he's been paid he can sort them out as he wants and even see your saving I'm according to that then you also have your share accounts detailed into your accounts. I'll just pick up an account. So here you can see a detailed overview of Yeah, and your audio is cutting out a bit, Ronick. So and share accounts. Then the, the client has his recent transactions where he can search through his transactions or view them or sort them date wise. And you also have the charges that are incurred on his account. And then the user also can transfer in between loan accounts and savings account. Uh, so you can transfer some amount from your savings account to a loan account and vice versa and then you also have the option to do third party transfers so basically these are beneficiaries that are already on the mefos platform so you go ahead and add the account number and account type of the beneficiary that you want to add and you can have like third party transfers in the platform so you can send funds from your savings account to the beneficiaries that you have registered So you get the user gets a good prompt of reviewing his transaction and then he can transfer it successfully and then he has the beneficiaries part so basically this is the complete overview of how the user interacts with his accounts and then he's less dependent on field offices and he can do transactions on his own from the web platform of self-service uh, so if anybody has some questions or suggestions around it, like how we can do it better. Yeah, so thanks, uh, Ronak. So yeah, so just to add a couple more details too. So on the third party transfers, like right now, 
you know, those are just between clients that have other accounts in Mifos, but we are going to be trying to integrate that with our Stellar integration such that that could enable a transfer via the Stellar pro protocol across two different microfinance institutions. And then we would also like to integrate uh, mobile money here so the transfers can also occur via the mobile money platform through to another client using the that same mobile money service. And so this could hopefully be you know, a very good tool to allow clients to do self-initiated uh, transfers on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. And then just to you know, clarify once again too, so this self-service app is designed for any financial institution to be able to you know, use it and then offer their clients a self-service web interface to directly interact with their accounts, as Ronak said, without having to have the intervention of any staff at the MFI. So Ronak is still going to be adding in some additional features around like surveys, allowing clients to submit surveys once we get the, the back end work finished there. And then we'll also allow clients to view their reports and account statements. That's another feature he'll be putting in. And then we're trying to also work on some more uh, support tools and chat mechanisms through the app itself. Oh, and, and Sindoro, did you have any other questions about the third-party transfers? I see your your question just came up. So, uh, yes, Siva. So you can repay the loan. So right now, that was you know a transfer from a savings to a loan account. And then Ronak, did we implement like a button from? I know we've done it in the mobile app, but did we implement a button from the? an action from the, the loan view to repay the loan from a savings account did you did uh, we do that yet or? we haven't done that yet but we do have to feature in the transfers okay. page so we can we can actually from a savings account we do get all the loans account so we can make a transfer here but yeah we do need a button for like making a payment from the loan account details page to actually transfer from there Okay. Yeah, we'll get that. Ad yeah, we'll get that added in Siva, as that's yeah one of the primary use cases we need to to support. So right now you can do it from this transfers menu, but we'll make sure it's a part of the the loan page as well. And then in the future, you know, once we've integrated this with uh, more of a mobile a mobile money tool, you would also be able to repay a loan from an external account. But right now it's just repaying from a savings account that, that client has, which is still very very valuable. And then, Aronik, did you want to respond to Del Delviri's uh, question about the registration? That, so that, yeah, that's not working yet, but it'll be, you know, finalized in the near future. But I'll let you give a brief update on the registration work, Aronik. So. so yeah, so basically, what you need is you need an account number and a mobile number register. So the client would be able to register on the platform through giving those details and then they can sign up and that will get connected to the client account that is on the me first platform so the registration part is still in a work in progress we are still figuring out some final details and some user flows but yeah that's the core of it and then it, it would be a self-sufficient part so currently like if you have to register a client you need to register it from the platform and it's like a user intervention process but using this if the client knows his account number and his mobile or email he can self-register themselves and start using the web portal against it yeah and so we just recently implemented the api api around the self-registration delivery and now we're implementing it in the web and self-service app so that'll be a part of the final version of this uh, and then I think Chris next had a question. Uh, so right now, like that's a good, yeah, good suggestion, Christopher. Like, so we do have, you know, at the platform level that staff can initiate uh, standing instructions for a client, but I don't think we've opened up the self-service API to initiate self-service transactions or initiate standing instructions by the self-service APIs. So that's a good suggestion, and that's something we'll add to the, the scope as we should allow the clients to set up recurring transfers between their accounts through the, the self-service interface. 
And then, yeah, Siva had a good question too. In Ronak, do we have, like, do we have the, because the API is supported, but did we create the workflow for the new loan account applications in the web app yet? Uh, we don't have loan of applications yet, but yeah, because it was in the working phase. So I have a plan to add it like in this week or the coming of week, it will be there like the Android app and the web source of us app would be in sync as soon okay. as it's done. Yeah, so Siva, we do, so our self-service APIs do support uh, the client to apply and create a new loan account. And that'll be added in to the final version of this web app by, by Ronak. And then I'm not sure if we yet support a new savings account application. I need to check if we've built the API for that. But for now, it'll at least be the new loan account so clients can apply for, for loans on their, their own. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Ronak, for that demonstration and also thank you for the, the mock-ups you've provided which you'll see on some of the upcoming uh, demos later on this meeting and thanks to everybody for the questions and feedback you had thus far and so Ronak shared the, the link to where you can test this out on your own and he'll share the I think yeah the credentials you you've got there but we'll share the credentials as well and so as he's continuing to add in additional features, please keep continue checking out the, the link there. And if you have more feedback, please uh, send it along as it's been it's been great already to, to pinpoint a couple of the, the features that we can support and haven't yet added in. And so if there are any you know additional self service features you haven't seen, just begin a discussion on the mailing list too, as some of them require new APIs and then we can get those new APIs built and then those features can be supported in the various apps. So I'm gonna next pass it on to Dilpreet. And so Dilpreet has also been working on a project using the self-service APIs. So he's taken a version one of our Android self-service app that Rajan led after GSOC last year. And then he's been redesigning that and adding in support for new features. And so I'll let Dilpreet showcase the work he's done thus far. So I'm going to make you the presenter, Dilpreet, and I'll unmute you as well. Okay, you should be the presenter now, Dilpreet, and then I'll let you share your screen whenever you're ready. Uh, yeah, uh, so is my screen visible? Yeah, we see the, the go to training Chromium web browser tab. We can see your screen. So, Preets? Yeah. So, is the emulator visible now? Yeah, we I see the Android emulator now. So. Yeah, so uh, this is the Android version for the uh, self service application which Ronak have, has made for the web part. So, we can just log in using the credentials. Just a second. I'll... I think I need to just. Yeah, no worries, Dilpreet. Yeah, so just as Dilpreet's re, uh, re logging in or restarting his emulator session, uh, just you know to, to clarify once again, so it might not have been clear from some of the demo data, you know, showing so many accounts. But typically, a client would only have a couple accounts in here. But this will allow you know any financial institution using Mifos to offer you know a branded web or mobile, a self-service you know online banking application that their clients can use. So as you know, smartphones are becoming more prevalent, and as financial institutions are trying to become more branchless, these applications would be more valuable. For these organizations so. and so we worked on the self-service APIs uh, last year and then began building some of these initial applications that leverage the self-service APIs and these self-service APIs they can also be 
uh, utilized, you know, for some of the agent workflows that need to be supported. As the self-service APIs are the first APIs we've introduced that allow uh, external, you know, non-staff individuals to authentic authenticate into the system and perform transactions and view data. Uh, actually, uh, just uh, for the interference, sorry for the. In uh, I think the server is not working, so I'm not able to ping any API or just enter a login. Okay, let me check on that, Dilpreet. So. Okay. Yeah, no, it's down for me too. Let me ping Nazir. But I can point you to, are you able to, well, it would have to be that server, right? Because that's the only one that we have the self-service user yeah, created actually, for. Yeah, there's uh, one more server. I need to just rebuild the application. So okay. I'll be able to show that on that server. But it will take uh, around 10 minutes. Okay, well, we'll go. And then, because I think, Naman, you should be able to do your demo without the uh, uh, demo server. So we'll pass it on to... Naman to do his showcase and then we'll come back to Dilpreet. So let me make Naman the presenter. Yeah, and so as I'm making Naman the presenter, a little bit of background for his project. So the original vision for Naman's project uh, was born by Ishan, one of our Android mentors. So just as we're building out a modular, you know, framework for the back end with Generation 3, uh, Ishan, you know, using Android clean architecture principles, wanted us to build out a front end, you know, mobile wallet framework that's modular as well to both support consumer and agent facing uh, mobile wallet use cases. So Naman has been working on that clean architecture implementation. And then we had a use case from a bank in India around a mobile app for, for merchants to ease the collection of digital payments for them. So that's the first initial use case that Naman has been implementing on top of his architecture. But we'd also like to, you know, begin to implement some use cases on the consumer wallet side. So if you are a user or partner and you have some mobile wallet features that you might like to get implemented, we'd like to, to hear those. But I'll let Naman uh, demonstrate the work he's done thus far on the app he's building for this Indian bank use case and their collection of digital payments through merchants. So. So we can see your screen, uh, Naman. So can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see. We can see your screen. So whenever you're ready, you can begin. So thanks, Naman. So I think for some things, I, this app also needs to log into the app. But I will just skip those steps, and I will go to the sign up first. So this is uh, so basically what's the point of this app? Is this app is for now targeted to merchants to collect payments from customers using different methods. So customer and merchant can mutually agree on one mode of payment, and they can both use a certain type of payment. It may be UPI, what we are currently targeting in India. It may be some payment gateway that we can integrate according to the different countries, or maybe debit credit cards, and we also have uh, Aadhaar Pay in India also. So we will be integrating these use cases so that the merchant can collect payment using these different use cases. So. Then a merchant goes to, so we we'll have to like, verify his mobile number. This will be used for the API and with the, some sort of other verification also. And then he can uh, register his uh, detail, business details. So he made business name, we can also add banks. So this will be, will be using the, like, uh, the banking APIs for EKYC and everything. He can also add an other number. So an OTP will be sent to a registered other number. It's another number, and then OTP will automatically send to a registered other number, which is uh, yeah, this is also from the bank APIs that we have uh, gotten from our bank. 
So then a user can select a, a, a bank in which his accounts are, a customer, a website merchant, and it will fetch all the accounts. And then uh, we can uh, set a UPI pin. So here the merchant can also configure like what type of payment he can, what mode of payment he can accept. So you have the API, you can credit or QR code and uh, different payment gateways. Uh, so now select all the payment options and then we will start accepting payment. So this is a screen where a uh, merchant can create an invoice for our bill. So let's say a customer buys something of uh, amount 100 and so a merchant can create an invoice for that and he can ask the customer like how do you want to pay? And then the, let's say he says that he can pay using UPI. So uh, he asks the customer, that says, uh, this is my UPI, so the virtual payment, virtual private, virtual payment address. So I'll just write them out. The right side screen is the customer's, uh, you know, is the customer screen. So this is, you know, this is where you will get the request for the payment. So first of all, we are creating a new invoice for this amount. So I got a request on my in the customer screen that uh, Neman Dubeti, the merchant, has requested to pay hundred for this invoice ID, and I can uh, pay it using UPI. So this will fetch the amount, and then I can enter my UPI pin. The processing and then the the invoice will be reflected on the merchant screen, so it will be the invoice has been paid. So this is the first use case that we are currently targeting. This is based on UPI, and then we also have uh, one based on Aadhaar Pay, where we can integrate uh, biometric devices to authorize like the users or the customer's identity. Even we can again like enter the Aadhaar number, and you can scan fingerprint. So similarly, a new invoice will be created, and there will be a dialog showing. So this is where the uh, merchant's uh, phone will be connected to a biometric device. Uh, we need to yet we have to integrate an SDK here. So I will be doing this in the upcoming weeks. This case will be getting so we don't have the fingerprint data. I will just uh, like showcase as a demo process what happens there. So we have to like yet integrate the actual uh, back end, the actual uh, uh, biometric uh, integration of this. I'll just check again in the server working here. Yeah, the, the demo server is up now, uh, Naman, so. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, and so it's logged in. So I can also get the accounts of the, so this is where we can like add picking on. So all these accounts are also mirrored in the Android backend. So we, we, uh, the merchant can so whenever a merchant is, creates a like adds a new bank account in this app, the same account is mirrored in the front backend. All the all the invoices are also like mirrored in that bank account itself. So we, we can also add like multiple accounts here, so we can add so and then you can select which account to view the invoices from. So all the invoices will be reflected and whether they are pending or they are paid and everything. So and then Moving on to the next use case, so we have not yet integrated debit card, credit card. This is also like we will have to integrate the hardware machines here. Then we have a QR code. So we have two uh, two use cases here: QR code and payment gateway. In QR code, uh, QR code is generated with a unique payment gateway, and so uh, the customers uh, the customers phone can scan this QR code. So the amount and uh, so according to the invoice ID, the amount and to which uh, merchant the amount is to be paid, everything will be displayed on the customer's phones. From there, so we will have we will be integrating payment gateways here. So, so the like the uh, customer can pay using his online net banking, or he can pay using pay Paytm or any other mobile wallets, Mobiquick, everything. So we'll pay zero, and uh, the invoice was of zero. Was of zero. So it will be in the recent invoices here.
it will show in as a pending in pending state currently so this is the this is our invoice that is pending and the amount is zero the invoice id is this so and then the customer can click on pay invoice and the invoice paid will be reflected in the merchant's form this is the uh, uh, this is a new qr code used and similar to this you also have a payment gateway where we can enter the phone number of the customer where uh, the an sms will be sent to the unique payment link so currently i have integrated a text local api here for sending sms it takes some time but i think we can also integrate with the epos sms campaigns we we'll have to look into that uh, a little bit more so uh, again the similar thing will happen a unique payment link will be sent to the customer from where you can pay using yeah. so we'll be based on when you're using this link so we do i don't know so these two use cases we haven't implemented is the nsh and virtual com so these are the four use cases that we currently have in that uh, we the uh, dpi one is uh, working and we have the apis for it from the bank also for the other api we have apis but those apis are only for uh, the verification using an otp to the phone not with a biometric identification and uh, for qr code these are we will have to integrate separate payment gateways here also so this is the current one is the merchant can also like uh, see its details here and uh, add its pan number and verify and pan number and all the ekyc so yeah, this is a uh, problem i think naman and then siva had a question there if it was just focused on the retail market or could this be used to recollect uh, loan payments so i don't think that it can be used as uh, to recollecting loans but i think we may be able to create a use case here that focuses on this but not in the current version of that so i think that current version is focused for merchants only to collect payments from customers but we will be extending it to customers customer transfers also in the future i'm not entirely sure about the collect, uh, collecting loans in uh, the collecting loans feature yeah we should be able to do that siva but if you have direct use cases you would need to be su supported so please share those along too and we do have other other partners in the community they have built you know their own apps which allow external agents to do collections for for loans but this is definitely you know a use case that could possibly be supported here we would just need to do some additional integrations with apache finrac and so yeah so the work that you know naman showcased a lot of it is pretty specific to the india context and the india stack apis so both the universal payments interface or the upi and then the Aadhaar integration they have around you know identity and biometrics but this is all built on top of the the new mobile wallet framework that naman has started and so it can be a good starting point if within your region you have either a consumer or a merchant facing a mobile wallet use case you'd like to to support so we look forward to you know having naman continue work on this throughout the rest of his internship and we're hopefully going to try and uh, uh, build out some consumer facing use cases too so that we can have that as a starting point for others to extend on top of this new architecture so thanks naman so so I'll bring it back to Dilpreet, and the demo server is up and running once again. So Dilpreet shouldn't have an issue with the, the demo. And sorry you had to face that live, uh, Dilpreet. Nazir was working on a feature, and he purposefully brought down the demo server for a few minutes. So. Uh, yeah, so is my screen visible? Yeah, we can see your screen, Dilpreet. So. Yeah, uh, so when we log in, um, then we'll be prompted for a passcode setup. So we implemented this passcode as, at, uh, as it is a banking app. So uh, instead of like uh, entering the password and username again and again, so we implemented a passcode so that uh, we can just set up a passcode and uh, for the next login, we can just enter the passcode and we can log in. And this is the, the dashboard screen. It uh, generally shows all the the basic details like the total savings uh, the amount which total savings accounts have and same as that for the loans 
we can directly navigate to the account section, the transfer section, charges, and apply for a loan and uh, check for beneficiaries. And first, uh, if we go to loan accounts, and uh, uh, these are the loan accounts, and uh, I've implemented a feature to just filter the loan accounts related to the the status of the of the savings account. So if I just filter them out, I can just see all the active ones and i'll come this uh, come back to this qr code and uh, we can have the general details about the savings accounts and we can make a transfer from this account to another account so if i just transfer some so it will just ask for a confirmation regarding the transaction we are going to make and once we transfer it, yes. We can also have a look at the transactions which were happened. So uh, we can also filter them according to the weeks or related to the, if we want to just have a custom filter like from 1st of August to 3rd of August, then we can also filter that out. Yeah. We can also see the saving charges if there are any related to that saving account. And these are the loan accounts. Uh, we can, I will just filter them to just show you. So, uh, regarding the make payment option, which is not currently implemented, uh, the Android application, uh, we have implemented this feature in this uh, mobile application so we can make a transfer just like the similar which are made so we can make a payment from the savings account to the loan account and and for the uh, on the dashboard screen uh, we also have a transfer uh, for the feature where we will choose to just transfer within the account or we can just do a third party transfer so for the third party transfer, uh, we we'll, can select between the beneficiaries which are present, which we have created. So we can just, oh, okay. So we can transfer it the same way as we have transferred for the, uh, within the self account. And uh, we have, uh, we can manage all the beneficiaries which are present. We can even add a beneficiary. And for adding a beneficiary, I have uh, implemented, uh, we can either do it manually, or if we have another person which is, uh, which we can just ask him to show the QR code, then we can just see his QR code and uh, add the beneficiary. I'll just show you how can we add that. So beneficiary is added and we can even edit or update the beneficiary and even delete it. And uh, we have an option to apply for a loan. We can just select the loan product, uh, which product we want to have. And purpose of the loan and we can just set a principal amount we can change the submission date and uh, disbursement date and submit for a loan and we can successfully apply for that and uh, even if we want that uh, we don't want to show this uh, details we can just hide it and it will be saved and uh, that's it from me So, uh, hello, am I audible? I'm not able to hear anyone. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. 
yeah okay so is uh, are there any doubts related it and yes uh, all this uh, the material design implement uh, which are implemented uh, all these mocks are created by ronak so thanks ronak for creating them Uh, in the meanwhile i'll just show you the feature if we just want to log in again so we just have to uh type the password and it will log us again and yes uh, there's one more thing we can just click on this profile icon and we can see all the details related to my account the account number activation date groups and all uh, the basic user details which i have submitted Uh, yep, and these are the charges. We can see all our charges, and yes, we can also see charges related to our loans and savings accounts. Also, I'll just show you one. Yep. So, uh, I need to find some charges. I think. I don't think I'm able to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dilpreet. Can you hear me now? Oh. Yes. Yes, I can hear. You. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. My audio stopped working for a moment. Thanks for covering, uh, Dilpreet, while my audio wasn't working and showing some additional features. So, yeah, we can send out if you'd like to test. You know that version of the APK. We can send out the in progress APK right now. And before we have the final version, but uh, Dilpreet is continuing to work on some additional features. We'll be able to view uh, reports and savings and loan account statements. And then we're also trying to integrate allowing notifications to be sent from staff to the clients via the app using our you know campaigns feature. So we're going to have Mayank do a small demonstration of some of the features he's been working on on the Android Field Officer app, and then Tarun will also demonstrate a few features. And I know we're getting close to the end of the time, so we're going to try and run over by a few minutes, so hopefully everybody can stay. And if not, we'll continue recording till we get to the end of the two showcases. So uh, we can see your screen, Mayank, and we'll let you take it away. Thank you. So. Oh, let me unmute you, Mayank. Sorry. Okay, you should be able to talk now and be audible. Yeah, hi, am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you, Mayan. So. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, I've been working through the Android client app, and I have implemented four features uh, so far. So first feature is passcode feature. So uh, if user login into the app, so I have, I have implemented a passcode feature so that user don't need to enter the password every time. So for example, user can set the password, password 1234, and user can save this in share preference. And this passcode will be saved uh, after generating a SHA hash. So even if uh, the phone is rooted and someone is trying to access the shared preference or uh, data of the app, then he, will, he or she will get the SHA hash, not the uh, decrypted passcode. So for example, if we now log out the app, and if we enter the wrong passcode, then it won't allow and yeah right now so this is the first act, uh, this is the first activity of android client app so this was my first feature implemented and this ui was implemented by dilpreet so dilpreet thanks for this and right now i'm showing to you a second feature which is offline center creation so we can create the new we can create a new center even in the offline mode so right now i'm going to enable the offline mode in the android client app and for example, I am trying to create first center.
okay so the, the details of the center is saved into the internal database of the in the of the app and now i'm going to create the uh, sorry uh, second center so the details of second center is also saved in database and now that now we can sync these these uh, two centers with the server so before that we have to disable the offline mode even if the mode is not disabled then it will give uh, it will give the information that you have to enable disable the offline mode so we can go online and the details of uh, these two centers is saved is synced with server so this was my second feature and i am going to show the third feature which is uh, syncing the syncing the details of all the centers with database internal database so we can see the details of the center even in the offline mode so for example i am going to sync four or five centers we can select the centers uh, by long pressing for example i have selected six centers and we can click on sync so it will sync the center and a loan account and saving account of center and group details and loan uh, loan and saving account loan and saving account of groups which are associated with which are associated with the center and the client details and that loan and saving account of clients which are associated with each group so it uh, it will uh, sync each and every detail so the centers are now synced and we can enable the offline mode and we can see the details of the center so for example these six centers are shown here and we can see the details of any of the center group list we can go into the groups and we can see the details of client and savings account loan and savings account so this was my uh, third implemented feature and i have added one more feature in the offline mode which is uh, synchronization of survey so we go to clients activity and this is the survey this is these are, these are the two surveys that clients can that client clients can fill for example i am going to fill the first survey there are 10 questions we can submit the survey and now i have added a settings menu so if we click on sync survey then it will sync survey and questions and responses of each survey so if we uh, enable offline mode then even in the offline mode we can fill the survey so that these two surveys are seen so we can fill these surveys and we can submit the survey so uh, these were these are my two uh, four features which i have implemented three of them are related to offline functionality extension of offline functionality in the android client app and one is the passport feature implementation in that so this was all from my side okay thank you uh, mayank and then to answer siva's question yeah the group creation the group and client creation can be done offline yeah group and client creation are were already implemented so we can uh, we can create the client and group also yeah yeah and the major so work a... the major work that maya had done was around enabling the offline synchronization at the center level so previously you could only only synchronize from the group below so now you could take as maya did the entire center and synchronize all of the groups and clients beneath that center in in one step so so great work myunk and, and the work that myunk did around the uh, encrypting of the four digit password is what is being used for both the android field officer app and the self service app so thank you for that feature contribution myunk and so i'm going to pass it over to tarun who's going to demonstrate some of the features he's been working on for the android field officer app and that'll be our last showcase for today. So. And thank you, everybody, for staying a few minutes longer. So.
Hello, Arun. I'm Ajibin. Yeah, we can hear you, Tarun, and we see your screen now, too. All right. Uh, so I've uh, added in a few new features. So the first among those is to create signature and then ability to upload that. So I'm just taking some random client. So on taking the upload signature, will be presented with a new screen. So here we can... and then we can just there's also an option to upload an image from the gallery so since this is an emulator so I don't think so we have a few other signatures as well so we can also upload the signature from the gallery and we can then check them in the documents associated with that client so here, here these are signatures so since there is no limitation uh, related to the number of documents that can be saved so that is why we are having several signatures i use them for testing purpose only and after that i worked on uh, i've implemented the feature of collection sheet so mainly i've been working on this collection sheet part uh, first is individual collection sheets For this, I have made a sample, and so these are all the details uh, related to the collection sheets with the client name, the loan account numbers, the total dues and charges. The additional details can also be uh, added. Or they can be just removed as well. So, so this is some error. This is not not related to the implementation. Anyway, uh, now uh, after that, uh, the collection sheet. Uh, so we have actually three kinds of collection sheets. So first was individual. The second is collection sheet uh, related to centers, also called productive collection sheets. And the third one is for uh, group, uh, the collection sheets associated with group. Uh, so I'll show the productive collection sheets first. Uh, the meeting date since Android app has a constraint that it cannot uh, allow, it allow the user to select a future date. So I have hard coded the date, uh, which is 20th August. Uh, I have made a sample in which the meeting date was uh, 20 of July and uh, it, it was repeated monthly. So that is why the next is 20th, 20th, uh, 20th August. So we do not have a very elegant UI since the number of columns and those are all those created dynamically. So we do not have those uh, statically. So we cannot perform very good looking UI here. Uh, we can add options. Uh, by default, I've added a few zero zero amounts. We can just add some amount and then submit it. So uh, we have the, you know, the group name and then the client name, these three clients, and the associated charges and the loans. So we have attendance as well. Again, these are the issues which are not related to implementation. Similarly, there is a collection sheet for groups as well. So, first part is similar to what was there in the productive collection sheets, except that we have the same products here as well. Along with the loan products, it will show the same products and some additional information, which can also be added in this particular field. Uh, check number. Uh, so uh, I am in. I am entering string because there was no uh, constraint on the server side, so I was not absolutely sure whether there should be some. Uh, some restriction uh, regarding the user input whether should whether that should be on 
So that is why we can also input strings. And we can submit. So since there is something, uh, we, we are all continuously adding some new features in the backend as well. So this is something, some error related to backend. So it is some internal server error. So I've been in contact with the people uh, in the mailing list. So we'll sort them out. So um, mainly this was uh, the part that I've finished. And currently I'm working on uh, run reports. Uh, initially, we are just uh, at the moment I have implemented showing the categories of these reports, and uh, in like future days, uh, in, like the coming week or so, I'll finish this and will implement the features. Uh, so that was about it. Uh, other than this, I also implemented a multi text option because that was posing several as the app is quite complex now and the code base is significantly large, so it was also posing issues. If we were adding some new features or files because of the uh, single text issue uh, in the app, so I have enabled that as well. So it will be easier for the future developers to contribute. Okay, thank you, uh, Tarun. And so we'll try and you know we'll try and get feedback from others in the community on how we can try and improve the UI around the center and group-based collection sheets, but it was great to, to see that in action and see all the other features you've worked on too. Yeah, echoing what Mayank said, the collection sheet is a very difficult interface to implement on the mobile screens and it's been a long time coming to have the bulk collections be supported in the mobile app as that's a very important use case as it can be used you know for other use cases beyond just the center-based microfinance models that have the group meetings and also be used for though any type of organization that's trying to do you know bulk collection so it might be a susu group or some savings collector that's going around and wants to enter all the repay the collections of deposits in bulk and so that takes us to the end of the showcases we had scheduled for today I thank you everybody for joining and staying a bit longer and I especially want to thank you know all of our GSOC interns who showcased their work today. We'll have a future showcase of the other projects and then after GSOC's over we'll do a final showcase of the different apps that the students have worked on. So in the email with the recording and the slide deck we'll send out you know, links to where you can either download these in progress APKs or you can test out like the web app that the link Ronick provided. So thank you again to all who participated and all the great feedback we got. And you all have a good evening, morning or afternoon wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye bye.